how valuable can a 1963 quarter be? We'll talk about it, all of it, right after this. Hey YouTubers, this is J and B from JB Coins Inc. And in this video, we will talk about 1963 quarters and the most recent amazing sales of them. But first, we'd like to say thank you for watching and liking our videos. It helps our small channel a lot. The quarters struck in 1963 were struck in a silver composition and should weigh 6.30 grams. The year 1964 was the last year of production of regular business strike quarters minted in silver. Now the regular strike quarters were minted at the Philadelphia and the Denver mints. The Philadelphia mint also produced proof coins that year and coins struck at the Philadelphia mint that year won't have a mint mark. So the only difference between them will be their finish, regular versus shiny on proof coins as you can see in this picture. The quarters struck in 1963 don't have a low mintage. If anything, their mintages are on the higher end and are worth a lot only in high mint state condition. Now the highest grade known for this coin is only MS67+. Plus. And the plus after the grade means that it's in between the grades. And here's the latest sale of the 1963 P quarter in grade MS67 plus. This coin sold in August of 2021 at the Stax Bowers auction for $6,600. There are quite a few coins in that grade, but none higher. Now, let's talk about the 63 quarters struck at the Denver Mint. The coin will bear a D mint mark. The Denver Mint struck about 135 million quarters. It's a huge number. Though it's the third largest mintage of the Washington Quarter Series, it is still very pricey since the Denver Mint struck coins that year in poor condition, which is very unusual for them. So the low population makes them very valuable. Population simply means how many coins in any particular grade among the same coins year and denomination exist. So, the highest grade known is MS-68 for a coin that's been graded, but only one coin exists in that grade so far, and until last year, it's never been sold. So it finally sold at the Stax Bowers auction, and it beat all the experts' expectations. It sold for $24,000. How cool is that? There are serious collectors out there that are collecting only coins in the best grades and are willing to pay huge money for a specimen like this one. As for proof coins struck at the Philadelphia Mint, they're not worth huge money, but they're still pretty good for proof coins. Proof coins usually don't sell for a lot. Proof coins go through a different production and handling process and they are usually, with not many exceptions, leaving the production line in very nice condition. Now, the best condition for proof coins on a grading scale is proof 70 with a decam finish. None of them exist in this category for this coin. There is not even one 1963 proof 70 quarter with cameo finish. But there are four known proof 70 with basic proof finish and one of them sold recently at Heritage Auctions for $1,680. So definitely nice money for this coin. The 1963 quarters do have many known varieties with the doubling on the obverse and reverse that exist on the same coin being the most interesting. But there are many varieties on this year's quarter in fact, more which we cover in our previous videos. So definitely look for a lot of cool stuff on this quarter. Don't just look at it for its silver value. As far as errors go, also many of those exist on the 63 quarters. 
You also can find the 1963 quarters struck on a dime or silver dime planchet. One is a double denomination error, and another one is a wrong planchet error. They are valuable, and their price also depends on the error's condition. But this error, even in circulated condition, will still bring you hundreds. In low mint state grades, over a thousand. This error quarter is only graded MS62, and it's sold at Heritage Auctions for $2,100. It's amazing money for a coin in MS62 grade, a grade that you can easily find in your change in circulation, so always check your change. You can only find a few 1963 quarters struck on cent planchets. This error is very common, and just like with many coin denominations with regular non-error coins, the condition of the error is important. But the bottom line is, there's so much for you to look for on these quarters, definitely check your change or your collection to see if you have any. And now we have a question for you. Do you have any error quarters? Not just the ones struck in 1963. Please let us know in the comments section below. We read all of your comments. Also, if you like valuable quarters, please watch our video linked in the upper corner of this one. So we hope you liked this video, found it helpful, and if you did, please like, share, and subscribe so we can create more videos for you. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.